Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. In this installment of Ask an Archaeologist, the question is, what was your best discovery? So far, I have not ranked my discoveries in any order. Rather, I regard each discovery as potentially significant as long as it can contribute new knowledge. Whenever I encounter an artifact or a site or any other archaeological evidence, then I think of what it can contribute in terms of substantive knowledge and theoretical knowledge. Substantive knowledge refers to any objective material evidence, while theoretical knowledge refers to concepts and research themes. As just one example from my work at the Retidian site in Guam, I cannot even count how many times when I have recorded different stonework ruins, artifact concentrations, caves with rock art, deeply buried site layers, abundant food remains, and diverse artifacts. Many of these findings of substantive knowledge were extremely rare or even unique discoveries, not seen anywhere else. Others were representative of daily life and routines during different time periods. Often, I have found the same or similar objective evidence again and again. In those cases, the repetitions of patterns in substantive knowledge can support investigations into theoretical knowledge. In my work at the Retidian site, as well as throughout Guam and the Mariana Islands, I have used these repeated findings of pottery fragments and other information to formulate a chronological sequence of when each major form or style of pottery or other artifacts had been used in the past, and then I have been able to link this information with other findings in their chronological order. After I outlined these overall patterns and trends, then I could appreciate whenever I found anything different from the ordinary expectations, and I could be confident about referring to any rare or unique discovery as constituting a truly special quality of new, substantive knowledge. In my research process, after knowing first about the substantive knowledge of factual discoveries, then I can consider the potential for linking this information with larger concerns of theoretical knowledge. In this regard, one of my contributions has been a new understanding of integrated or co-evolving natural and cultural history, specifically at the Retidian site as one intensively detailed example among many others. These results then allowed me to build other theoretical contributions, such as how ritual caves and other ceremonial places related with larger patterns of daily life and routines. Along with my work at the Eurytidian site, my career as a whole has involved research all across the Asia-Pacific region. In this regard, I have been able to coordinate many different points of substantive knowledge toward larger comprehensive results. For example, I have refined the cross-regional view of the pottery trail and other material evidence of how ancient people explored and settled across this vast region. In my research approach, I emphasize the role of objective material facts in archaeology, first as the direct basis for substantive knowledge, and then second as the supporting evidence for theoretical knowledge. Do you want to know more about these issues in archaeology? I encourage you to explore more of the online archive of episodes and playlists in this YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and never miss another episode of the Archaeology Studio.